What's going on? It's X and just want to let you guys know what you're about to see is some behind the scenes of me doing a Bleacher Report live stream talking all things trade deadline baseball. Um, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of look behind the camera and what I go through, um, kind of me doing my research and everything like that and just having fun talking baseball. This is what I love to do. Uh, so come check it out. The Padres are all in, right? We've been talking about this team tired of being the little brother of the Los Angeles Dodgers, and you go out and make a generational move to bring in a Juan Soto and have him under control for not only the rest of this year, but 2023 as well as 2024. So it's not just a this year thing, right? You also gotta look at, we have opportunity to win at least the next couple of years and I think when you look at the Dodgers and you look at how far out in front they are and what they did last trade deadline, going out and stealing a Max Scherzer and a Trey Turner right out of your hands and, and right out of your grip, I think that this had to be done. AJ Preller had to get this job done. Um, there was no if, ands, or buts. And now you bring one of the games, if not the game's best player to San Diego, now you talk about putting them on the map, this is where you can stamp the sticker on the map that they should be in the playoffs no problem and they should be able to compete and try to go deep in this postseason run. They're all in, they're looking for a championship. Yeah, it looks like Brandon Marsh possibly going over to the Phillies. Uh, as far as the Phillies go, the one area in which there's always concern is the back end of that bullpen, just the bullpen in general. So I think just the, that fact that you can add a Robertson to the back end of the bullpen, he's been amazing this season. That's gotta be a huge bonus. And it's gotta be a confidence builder for the rest of that rotation because you look at sometimes that rotation of the Phillies feels like they, need, they have to do everything. They have to go so deep in the ball games. Now you have somebody who can lock up games in the back end. That's gotta be a great confidence builder. What are the Cardinals doing? What are the Cardinals doing? Cardinals do go ahead and get a Jose Quintana, um, obviously a, a piece that they're very familiar with uh, from the Pirates. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm on the board with you though. They need a swing and miss, strikeout type of guy, and I think Carlos Rodon can be that guy for them. He just seems to fit in that rotation perfectly. The Cardinals have had their injury issues with guys like Steven Matz. They had injury issues with Jack Flaherty, who is their swing and miss guy, just has not been available the way that you wanted him to. And then you have Wayno, who's been aging like fine wine. He's been taking care of business. And I love what you said about the offense. You got two guys on the corners when you talk about Paul Goldschmidt and you got Nolan Arenado playing amazing baseball. Um, the offense is starting to click a little bit. You need another piece in that rotation, another swing and miss piece. Let's talk, let's hit on the Dodgers for a little bit. Cause this is a Dodgers team that was in the running for Soto. And I thought that the Dodgers were gonna be the ones to end up pulling away with the Juan Soto because they have the farm system, because they also have the money necessary to, to maybe add, uh, add the extension side of things, but you always see the Dodgers going after the big names. They did not go after Juan Soto or they did not get Juan Soto. What are your immediate thoughts on the Dodgers there? Let me, let me say something about Joey Gallo to the Dodgers real quick. Joey Gallo to the Dodgers, I think Joey Gallo needed a change of scenery. And, and we can go out there and, and tell people that you are a Yankees fan. We'll let you get after this in a second. But I look at Joey Gallo to the Dodgers and I think he needed the change of scenery. He had really struggled. You, to, crazy to see the OPS drop under 700. You're talking about a guy that hits homers and takes walks and for his OPS to drop under that average around sitting around 170. So to see the Dodgers go and get a Joey Gallo it tells me that they're still looking for that power, still looking for that on base, but also I think the defense is gonna be an important piece. You look, you, Chris Taylor's been out for injury. You look at him being able to play some left field, even some center field, wherever he's gotta play right field, gives you some defensive versatility um, and gets on base. I think that change of scenery is gonna be good for him. He doesn't have to take the load on that he had as far as all the booze that he's hearing from New York. But at the same time, let's not forget the Dodgers market is a big market too and LA is a big baseball town. What are your thoughts on Joey Gallo to the Dodgers? 
we're, we're always hoping the best for players. Me being a former player um, at the major league level, you're always wanting the guys to do well. Um, even if guys have struggled, you want them to turn it around. Let me get to the chat a little bit more before we touch on the Mets. ESD says, Gallo's a bench player. If, he, if the hitting coaches can't fix Muncie and Bellinger, good luck with Gallo. <laughs> I'm not even gonna respond to that one. That was good though. I'll go ahead and say it. The Mets are losing the deadline right now. The reason why I say it is because they're a team that's been great all season. And when you look at some of the pieces that you can add when it comes to the catching position, and Scuba Steve mentioned in the chat, Mets should keep what they have instead of trading for Contreras and bring up Alvarez. Yes, that's an option, but I love the opportunity to go get a Contreras and make sure you solidify that backstop. I love the idea of you going and getting a reliever to help out at Edwin Diaz. You mentioned it, Edwin Diaz has been, been amazing. But I look at if you can add another guy to keep that pressure off of him, or if he goes through a rough stretch, I get another back end of that bullpen that can help it in, in a sense. And then also the power, you mentioned it. Nets need to get JD Martinez if he's available. I think that's the big piece. Yes, I love the idea of a Darren Ruff and you get a Vogel back and so you get your right-handed power back going against lefties, the left-handed power back going against righties but I don't know if that's enough. I don't know if a platoon is gonna keep me past the Atlanta Braves, as well as the Phillies and any other team in that National League. So I look at the Mets right now are losing unless they go get a big bat and it quite possibly could happen. What else are they saying in the chat about the Mets? Um, if the Phillies get Syndergaard, then the Mets become the third best team in their own division. <laughs> Bonzarella says, M-E-T-S equals my entire team stinks. <laughs> hey, I'm so weak at these comments. <laughs> Bat Have Boy says, Mets have the best rotation in baseball. You guys are nuts. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. We didn't say the Mets, we didn't say anything was wrong with the Mets rotation. We didn't say anything was wrong with the Mets rotation. Let's get that fair and square. Now, if DeGrom is back healthy, and doing what he needs to do, then we're talking about one of the best rotations in baseball. But until that is solidified, we still got to see. Now, I, I'm not, no, nobody, me or Orso never said nothing was wrong with that rotation because you look at Taiwan Walker, you look at Scherzer, you look at having DeGrom, you look at Chris Bassett and what he's done, you look at Cookie Carrasco looking decent this year, nobody said nothing's wrong with that rotation. Now, what we said was, if you're a World Series bound team, and you're looking to fight off these Mets and fight off everybody else, the Dodgers, what the Padres have done, uh, the, the Central and the Brewers, as well as every other team, you got to make some moves. Uh, another team I looked at was the Astros, um, but they went out and got Christian Vasquez and they were able to solidify that catching position uh, as well as still having Maldonado. So you're talking about a better defensive catcher and Christian Vasquez who can add a little bit of that offensive side as well. No, you, you definitely could use a JD Martinez. Any power bat you can get would be huge. Just like Orso said, the home run becomes so important. The power production becomes so important in the playoffs. And we, we ain't talking batting average. You're talking fifth in batting average. That didn't do nothing for me. The OPS, you're talking a little bit more of my language, but I still gotta have somebody that I can count on going deep when I need him to go deep besides a Pete Alonso. Over the next five to six years, the Atlanta Braves are gonna be a team to beat for a, a, a minute. They're gonna be a team to beat for a while to come now with the nucleus, the young nucleus that they've locked up and that they have there. Let's not forget Ozzie Albies is out right now, but he's another big piece there um, at that second base position. We, we got some breaking news while, we're, while the trade deadline live stream is happening. Again, go into the chat, give me what you got. Some breaking news here. Here. The Orioles have acquired Brett Phillips per source. The, the Orioles have acquired Brett Phillips. We know the Orioles are a team that's looking to rebuild still. Um, they obviously were still in that conversation of the wild card. It's going to be tough for them. They go and trade Trey Mancini to the Astros. A huge pickup for the Astros there. An upgrade at first base specifically. Uh, Guriel has been struggling there this year. Had a great year last year, been struggling this year. Um, 
I look at also Pablo Lopez has been traded over to the Twins. They're locked down closer. And now the Orioles looking to continue to rebuild, stockpile young talent. They go and get Brett Phillips. Your thoughts on Orioles acquiring Brett Phillips? Let me let me let me tell you what I think about the Yankees going because we haven't really touched on the Yankees right now. The Yankees went and got Frankie Montas, which is one of the best starters available this season at the deadline. Uh, you had Luis Castillo there. You had Frankie Montas probably just right there below. They get Frankie Montas. I love Montas because you get that splitter slider action. You get that nastiness. Does a great job of going deep in the ball games. The shoulder might have been an issue uh, coming uh, off or right before the All-Star break, but it's no longer an issue. He showed you that his start after the All-Star game. I love what this guy does to navigate lineups. He's shut down most of the lineups that he's faced. So a great addition, Frankie Montas. Twins, quietly but surely adding, adding pieces. Quietly but surely adding pieces. They got Jorge, Jorge Lopez. Well, I look at the Twins and you have to add a Michael Fulmer. You have to add a Jorge Lopez, Tyler Malley to get to be the team that you're really looking to be and to hold on to the number one top spot in the AL Central. You have to add those pieces because you have the Guardians right there. You have the White Sox that have been playing better baseball. And then once you talk about the postseason, you're gonna need guys when it comes to depth of that rotation and health in that, in that bullpen as well to continue to stay strong, make that run. Do you think the Twins win the division? Let's start, since we were talking about the Twins, do we think the Twins win the division? I, I, I do think the Twins win the division. And I think the biggest reason being because they've already shown consistency and then also now you go add some pieces to help you continue to be that team that stays on top of the division um, we've touched on those pieces, Michael Fulmer, Jorge Lopez, Tyler Malley. Uh, they're trying to stay on top there. And you look at the inconsistency of the Guardians and the White Sox, I think that gives them the advantage there. Yeah, Noah Syndergaard immediately gives you some length in that rotation, gives you a little bit more of that depth. Um, obviously, like you said, not the same velocity that we've seen in the past, but still, uh, very usable when it comes to, you're talking about being a number four starter. We, would you ever think you're saying Noah Syndergaard is a number four starter um, in, the, in a different rotation? That's an added luxury right there, 100%. T. Will 2 says, Phillies, why? They should sell. <laughs> hey, I don't, it, you're talking about such a big market team with guys that, look, it almost made me throw my hat thinking about the Phillies selling right now when you got the rotation that they have you got the the offense and all of those pieces I even look at if you get a Bryce Harper back at the right time like that could change the whole outlook of the season uh, once that happens as well so I think that you continue to add especially you being right there in that wild card race let me start with Josh Hader and going over to the Padres, I understand the Brewers and the way they do things, right? You look at David Stearns and the, what, what he does over there, maximizing the value of his players and keeping them competitive for the long run, right? I know it's tough to lose a Josh Hader, a closer that has been bona fide um, and been one of the game's best closers for the past four or so years. But look, you still have the opportunity getting a Rodgers back who was a closer for the Padres. He did struggle over this past month, but I look at if you get him right, he can be just as effective. He's been one of the game's best closers this year. You also get a Lamette back, another guy that in 2020, we were all talking about Lamette and being that next up and coming starter, that next up and coming guy. He can be also another guy inserted into that bullpen. Devin Williams is a guy that's shown, basically been unhittable this year. So he could easily slot into that closer role as well. And you also get some other pieces back from the Padres when you talk about prospects. I know Gasser's in that deal. I've seen him throw uh, personally another young, a great arm that they're gonna get. I think the Brewers made a smart decision knowing that they have to maximize what Josh Hader's worth. Jack Curry is saying the Yankees have sent Jordan Montgomery to the Cardinals for Harrison Bader. The Yankees have gone out and gotten Harrison Bader for Jordan Montgomery. First of all, we understand Harrison Bader has been out with the plantar fasciitis issue. He's been on the IL. 
but you're talking about when he's playing, if not the game's best defensive center fielder right now. Him and Kevin Kiermaier right there. You're solidifying the defense in center field, as well as the bat has started to come around a little bit more this year, but he's been hurt recently. What are your thoughts on losing the Yankees now, not having Montgomery, but also getting a Harrison Bader? And I do think it's a possibility the Yankees go get another starting pitcher. I see you had mentioned a Carlos Rodon. That could be a guy that they're possibly looking to go get. But then also, I love the idea of the Yankees getting Harrison Bader, when healthy, being able to take the pressure off of Aaron Judge from, from playing center field. You lock up the center field position defensively, he can go get the ball with the best of them. That takes pressure off of Aaron Judge, moves him back over to right, he can get back to doing what he needs to do. I, I love that for them. Defensively, now you're looking at a gold glover in center, a gold glover in left with Andrew Benatendi as well. Um, I like this move defensively. Mitch White has stepped up big time for that Dodgers rotation. And I think now when we've talked so much about lengthening out the rotation, when you talk about having a great rotation, the Blue Jays have that. They have Kevin Gosman, Alec Manoa, Barrios has been, Jose Barrios has been amazing as of lately. Now you go get Mitch White, I think that's a big statement there from the Blue Jays. What are your thoughts? In a Whit Merrifield, you're getting someone that gives you defensive versatility, someone that's gonna go and play every day. We understand he's a guy that plays every day, don't matter what the situation is, can play all over the field, but he also gives great at bats, knows how to drive the baseball, has had a down year offensively, but this is a guy, another change of scenery could be great for him knowing that he's not in that playoff run with the Royals. If he's on a team now that's in the playoff race, I'm assuming that's gonna be a great opportunity for a Whit Merrifield. What are your thoughts? I gotta say I'm disappointed. Mark Tompkin reports that the Rays will not be adding any more additions. I thought they needed a catcher, and if they got a Wilson Contreras, I thought your team now is in a better position to make that postseason run, make some noise in the postseason. You're not adding a Wilson Contreras. I think that ultimately hurts this team in the long run, um, especially with Mike Zunino, 30 homers, not being in this lineup this year. That's a big blow to them. No more catching help. The Rays will not go get it. I'm disappointed there. Let's talk a little with Merrifield to the Blue Jays, what he brings to the table for the Blue Jays. Now the Blue Jays were a team that were possibly shopping for a, a impact left-handed bat. Now they go out and get a Whit Merrifield. I love the idea that he can play all over the field. I think that's gonna be important, especially as you don't know what the situation is with George Springer right now. He's been out and hurt. Um, what does Whit Merrifield bring to the Blue Jays? The aggressiveness of Whit Merrifield on the bases, I think, matches the intensity of this Blue Jays team uh, since Snyder has taken over at the helm a a as, a, as a manager. I, I think that's one thing that we've seen is more athleticism, more of this team putting pressure on the defense. We know he's stolen bases in the past. Where is he at this year stealing bases? Because last year he stole 40, 40 bags, right? Shout out to Warner Sports Management. That's with Merrifield's agency. That was my agency when I played in the game. But those days are gone now. Now I get to talk about the game and it's just as exciting, especially on trade deadline day. Ken Rosenthal saying, Cubs not trading Contreras or Ian Happ. Now you touched on this a little earlier when we first started this stream and kind of talking about the benefits behind keeping a Contreras and an Ian Happ. I think for other teams, this may not be good, right? But I think for the Cubs, a team that's looking to compete pretty soon, hopefully, building from within with the Wilson Contreras staying on the team, as well as an Ian Happ, who you do have under control, I think that's a big part of what you're looking to do to move forward if you're the Chicago Cubs. And the fan base has to be happy about keeping a Wilson Contreras and Ian Happ, at least for the time being. The Mets were a team that I expected to go out and get more, and maybe they felt okay with the platoon option of having a Vogelbach who hits great against right-handed pitching and Darren Ruff, who hits great against left-handed pitching. Maybe they felt like that combined was the one power hitter that they needed to insert in the middle of the order. Jock Peterson will not be moved, they're saying, as well as Carlos Rodon. This was one that kind of confused me because 
I thought this Giants team was going to be a team that was going to get what they could out of Carlos Rodon because he's a guy that can opt out of his contract at the end of the season, having a great season right now. I see him opting out if he continues that up, what he's been doing, the consistency in which he's pitching. But I look at that would have been a great arm for so many teams. I specifically thought about the Cardinals who could have used the Carlos Rodon as well as a lot of other teams who needed a frontline starter. What are your thoughts on the Giants keeping Carlos Rodon? Braves get Rossell Iglesias from the Angels for Jesse Chavez and Tucker Davidson. Rossell Iglesias, one of the best closers in the game, one of the best back end arms in the game, because I think this Rossell Iglesias move to the Braves is gonna be significant. You mentioned you lose a Will Smith, now you have to be able to solidify the back end of the bullpen with somebody. So it must have been a move that had already been discussed because if you're gonna give up a Will Smith, you gotta have somebody to come in and replace that, especially when you're the Braves looking to repeat as World Series winners, as World Series champions last year. You're looking to repeat, you gotta have those pieces. I think you go get Iglesias. That's big right there. We understand, especially what he did last year with the 34 saves. This year, he's looked pretty decent as well. What are your thoughts? Last second deal, Rossell Iglesias to the Braves. I think it's an amazing move. I think we look back to last year and look at what Alex Antopoulos did, going out and getting four dudes for the Braves, and they end up going and winning the World Series you couldn't count the Braves out from making trade deadline moves, knowing where they are in that NL East division and knowing where they want to be as repeat World Series champions. Great move going out and getting Rossell Iglesias. Cards and Mets, epic fail. We touched on the Mets. We just expected them to do a little bit more. I think the same can be said for the Cardinals. And I don't know how I feel about losing Harrison Bader just because the Cardinals are so defensively focused that a lot of their success comes from playing great defense. And I think to lose one of the game's best defensive center fielders, yes, I understand you need an arm, you get Jordan Montgomery in return, but to lose a Harrison Bader, that's gonna be a big blow. Hopefully, Dylan Carlson, who's been playing great center field, can continue to do so. I, I hope that that's the case. Padres won the trade deadline. 76 O Diego says Padres won the trade deadline. It's hard to argue with that or so. Amazing moves that made today to recap. The biggest move of the day, maybe the biggest move in history. Juan Soto, Josh Bell go to the Padres for a grip of players. Um, Robert Hassel III, James Wood, outfielder, Harlan Susanna, Mackenzie Gore, Juan Soto to the San Diego Padres, the best move of the day. The Padres show you they're all in on the game's best player in Juan Soto, generational player. Um, this is a Padres team not only looking to get to the postseason, but they're looking to win a World Series. Juan Soto again to the Padres highlights our trade deadline. I want to thank you guys for joining in on the behind the scenes of Trade Deadline Talk with Bleacher Report, the live stream. Uh, please continue to follow me, follow me on the journey, uh, all things baseball, everything inside and outside the game. Appreciate you guys and all the love and support that I've been getting. Uh, X out. <laughs>